Ludwig, full stretch. Not again, yes again from Ludwig. What are we watching? And then... Beach volleyball, shocking facts, weird rules, interesting info or history. Clothing in sports is quite a controversial matter, but did you know that there's an Olympic sport that prohibits athletes from wearing too much clothing? Hey, welcome back to my channel. Today, let's talk about one of the most popular summer sports and also a vigorous one where the players are said to jump approximately 300 times in a match. A clue? It can be played indoors or on the golden sands of a beach. If you still didn't get it, well, it's volleyball. But today, let's talk specifically about beach volleyball. The intro may have left you puzzled. Like why such a rule about clothing matters in a world-renowned sports event? Well, apart from the environment that beach volleyball is played in, its roots pretty much influenced the player's clothing. Beach volleyball was developed in very sunny and tropical places such as Hawaii and Southern California. So the common struggle for players in this sport and environment is the sand. We can't deny the fact that sand is very irritating to the skin once it gets caught inside our bathing suits. That's why it's ideal for beach volleyball players to wear less clothing to avoid trapping sand as much as they can. But don't get it wrong, the Olympics is not strictly imposing on the players to wear bikinis. They have the freedom to dress modestly, especially for teams with religious dress codes. Beach volleyball is quite interesting. And here are 10 facts about the sport that might leave you in awe. Number 10. Originally, beach volleyball was first known in Waikiki Beach, Hawaii in 1915, but it was modernly played in Santa Monica, California with two players. Similar to indoor volleyball, early beach volleyball matches had teams of at least six players on each side. Paul Pablo Johnson, an indoor player for the Santa Monica Athletic Club, is credited with developing the idea for the contemporary two-man beach volleyball game. While waiting for players to come up for a six-man game in the summer of 1930, Johnson chose to attempt playing with only the two persons present. The game was entirely changed. Number 9. The Olympia World Championship of Beach Volleyball, held during Labor Day weekend in 1976 at Will Rogers State Beach in Pacific Palisades, California, was the first professional beach volleyball competition. David Wilk of the Santa Barbara-based volleyball magazine oversaw the event's planning. Jim Mengs and Greg Lee were the inaugural World Championships and the victors. Out of a $5,000 total prize pool, they divided $2,500 each. Beach volleyball became extremely popular. Even U.S. President President John F. Kennedy was spotted watching a match in the 1960s. The Beatles even tried playing a hit in Los Angeles. Number 8. A volleyball match between nudists and naturists was played at the Sunny Trails Club in British Columbia, Canada in 1958 at the CSA Conference. Early adopters of the game were nudists. Records of regularly scheduled games at club dates back to the 1920s. Given that nudism and naturism are outside activities, a beach volleyball variation was logically chosen. By the 1960s, practically all nudist, naturist clubs had volleyball courts. Since 1971, White Thorn Lodge in Western Pennsylvania has hosted a sizable, over 70 teams, nude volleyball tournament every fall. Several smaller events are also conducted annually around North America. Number 7. At the 1992 Olympic Games in Barcelona, beach volleyball made its Olympic debut as a demonstration sport. This indicates that it wasn't a recognized Olympic sport, but rather a spectator sport gaining popularity. It gained popularity during this performance, and organizers decided to make it a legitimate Olympic sport. Athletes participated in the inaugural beach volleyball match at the Olympic level during the Atlanta Olympics in 1996. Beach volleyball for both men and women was added to the schedule, and ever since its introduction, both have been contested at the Olympic Games. Undoubtedly, it's an Olympic summer sport. Number 6. Typically, two-person teams compete in beach volleyball matches. Therefore, communication is the key. Players use covert signals to communicate their partner what their desired block is so they may avoid giving away their next move to the opposing side. For maximum efficacy, each team has memorized and predetermined its hand signals. The player's partner, who is standing behind them, may observe the signals by holding their hands behind their back to prevent mistakenly revealing them to the opposition side. That's also the reason why in televised games, the camera often focus on the hand signals of the players, which are coincidentally placed right at their buttocks, which some viewers may misinterpret in a bad light. Number 5. Except 
for during serving. When the only hand may be used, players may make physical contact with the ball with any part of their body. One team has three smashes to push the ball back over the net when it crosses to their side. A teammate must pass the ball back and forth between them to hit it twice in a row. It's prohibited for the ball to accidentally bounce off a player's body when they strike. The team records one contact for each time a player touches the ball. Number 4. You might be asking how beach volleyball can be fairly played in these windy environments since beaches frequently experience them. Because they'll need to hit the ball harder and run the danger of it being blown back in their direction, players who are hitting into the wind are at a disadvantage. Beach Volleyball's regulations, which require teams to switch side of the net every seven points throughout the first two sets of the play, were developed with this possible problem in mind. They switch after five points in the final set to ensure that each side plays about an equal number of games in each win direction. Number 3. Brazil has garnered the most medals across all beach volleyball related Olympic competitions. The United States, which has won the most gold, is its main rival. This advantage may be partly due to Kerry Walsh Jennings and Misty May Trainer, who brought the United States ahead of Brazil by winning nearly half their gold medals. Given her Olympic level reputation, Kerry Walsh Jennings is one of the highest paid female beach volleyball players. Walsh Jennings has amassed a net worth of roughly $10 million via winning tournaments, games, and sponsorships. With nearly 112 straight victories, Kerry Walsh Jennings and Misty May Trainer are the most successful beach volleyball duo in history. Number 2. Players may enter their opponent's court partially or entirely during a rally as long as it doesn't affect their ability to play the ball. There is a crossing zone surrounding the net when the ball changes sides. This encompasses the whole net, including the fictitious antennas that project forth from the net's edges. A player may reach into the side of their opponent to hit the ball while it's still in a recognized crossing zone above the net. A fault should be signaled if a player obstructs an opponent from playing the ball legally. And number one. Lastly, there seems to be a controversy behind the sport's history, which may contradict everything that had been said in this video. It's believed that the Georgia Morgan family from the city of Massachusetts, United States, invented the sport around 1895. Other accounts, however, assert that beach volleyball was initially played in Uruguay in 1914. Consequently, it's unclear when it began. Some theories also point to California's beaches, since the state's athletes were so inventive. And of course, to Brazil, where in 1941, a sand champion was held. On the beaches, La Bronze, Emancipa, and Achabacana, people were having fun. Beach volleyball was developed in France as well. According to experts, it held its initial competition before the French Volleyball Federation was founded in 1935. It's fair to say volleyball had been originally influenced by the West. That last fact may leave us all hanging regarding the real history behind the sport. What do you think about it? Feel free to leave a comment. We've come to the end and I thank you for staying that long. Don't forget to like and subscribe if you wish to see more of these fascinating facts about sports.